Good morning. Welcome to our Sunday morning service. We have all sorts of things to look at today, all sorts of things to enjoy. But let's first of all remind ourselves of who we are. I read to you from 1 Peter chapter 1. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil or fade, kept in heaven for you who through faith are shielded by God's power. This is who we are. We belong to Christ. Let's pray. Lord God, we thank you that we are shielded by your great power and your great saving love. So as we come to worship you today, help us to realise the greatness of who you are. Help us to understand more of the depth of your love so that we can indeed worship you more as you deserve. Gracious God, come close to us today and share with us the wonder of your presence. Give us your comfort when we are feeling sad and your strength when we are feeling weak. Help us to understand what you are telling us today. Amen. We have all sorts of things before us today, but before we launch in, a couple of words. First about next week. As we look forward to next Sunday coming up, let me just give you a little warning ahead. That will include um, us sharing communion together. So before you switch on the service for next week, please get some bread and wine, juice, water, whatever, together ready so that you can share with us as we go through that. That's for next week. This last week has been a bit of a bumpy week for some of us, not least because we said goodbye to Enid. All of a sudden she left and went to be with Jesus on Tuesday. And we're sad, but we know that she is with him. Our first song is really with her in mind because it was one of her favourites. She had many favourite songs, but she always used to love playing this one. She preferred it in the more modern tune, but this is the version we've got for now. She loved the words. She had promised to be on Jesus' side, to follow him, and that's what these words say.
I love being part of our church family. Old and young, we all belong together. We come from all sorts of different backgrounds and yet we're all part of one family. And it continues to amaze me how God chose this great variety of people and put them together and said, here, you get on with it. You are part of my family. You're the North Shields Baptist Church family. And we love each other. We care for each other. And that's all as it should be. So we're sad when people leave like Enid. We're glad when people come and join us. And then that's even more people to love and be loved by. I want to say uh, a welcome to John Allen, who's joining us more and more in these virtual services. And I hope you had a happy birthday earlier, uh, a week or two back. We've got a little treat now, though. One of the things that I really miss with us not meeting together on Sundays is being with the children. Well, some of the children have come to be with us today. Bella and Ethan um, are going to share with us a little song from Ethan and a prayer from each of them. Enjoy. Oh, I get by with a little help from my friends. Oh, I get by with a little help from my friends. Mm, I get by with a little help from my friends. Thank you for the doctor message. Amen. Dear Jesus, I hope that everyone had a nice day and that the, the next day will be really, really good and that the doctors and nurses and scientists um, are working really hard to find the thing that can stop this all and... Dear Jesus, I hope that all of us stick to the cover and stay, stay, stay safe. Amen. Thank you. That was really lovely. We're going to listen to one of our main readings now. It's from the book of Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 29. The reading is taken from Jeremiah 29, verses 4 to 14. This is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, says to all those I carried into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon. Build houses and settle down. Plant gardens and eat what they produce. Marry and have sons and daughters. Find wives for your sons and daughters and give your daughters in marriage so that they too may have sons and daughters. Increase in number there, do not decrease. Also, seek the peace and prosperity of the city to which I carried you into exile. Pray to the Lord for it, because if it pros prospers, you too will prosper. Yes, this is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel says. Do not let the prophet and diviners among you deceive you. Do not listen to the dreams you encourage them to have. They are prophesying lies to you in my name. I have not sent them, declares the Lord. This is what the Lord says. When 70 years are completed for Babylon, I will come to you and fulfill my good promise to bring you back to this place. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Then you will call on me and come and pray to me and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. I will be found by you, declares the Lord, and will bring you back from captivity. I will gather you from all the nations and places where I have banished you, declares the Lord, and will bring you back to the place from which I carried you into exile. That's a letter written by the prophet to the people who were far away from home, living in exile. They'd been taken to Babylon when Babylon overran Israel. 
and uh, they were obviously sad to be there. They were wanting to come back home, but Jeremiah, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, wrote this letter. He said to them, look, the Lord says he knows the plans he has for you, and they are good plans. You are not without hope. You still have a future. God still cares for you. But you can't come home just yet. In fact, it'll be 70 years before you come home. In the meantime, settle in, build houses, plant gardens, eat their produce, enjoy your families, look out for the prosperity of yourselves and for those around you. Settle in, because this is where you will be for a little while yet. Now, our present situation is rather like that. We're not exactly in exile, away from home. In fact, many of us are at home and not able to go anywhere else. But we're in a sort of exile from our normal way of life. It's a passing thing. I don't know how long it will last. I certainly hope it won't last 70 years. But um, it is a passing thing. And I think those words from Jeremiah to that situation also apply to our situation today. He says, settle in. Don't kick against it. This is where you need to be at the moment in this rather strange situation. So look out for others. Look after yourselves. Look after your neighbours. Settle in. Make the most of where you are. And then be ready to move on when the time comes. So our challenge for this week is what I'm calling home sweet home. Our focus is on our home. At the moment, most of us have to spend most of our time in our homes. And so I'd like you to look around and see what you really love about your homes. You know, under normal circumstances, I'm not allowed to go at the moment because Sean is shielded and so I'm, I have to stay at home too. But under normal circumstances, Friday is a day when I'm at the hospital as a chaplain. When I'm there, quite often I find myself speaking to people who are just preparing to go home. Sometimes after quite a long stay in the hospital. And in those situations, I sometimes say to them, so what are you looking forward to most? And they will say, oh, I'm looking forward to being able to make a cup of tea the way I like it. Or I'm looking forward to sitting in my chair. Or having a good night's sleep in my own bed. What do you love? about your home. So this week, I want, I really love, would love to have your pictures of home. You've done a brilliant job, by the way, of your rainbow pictures. All through this week, they've been coming in. Photos, craft creations, um, all sorts. Rainbow pictures have been wonderful. Well, now let's turn our attention more inside. Let's celebrate the fact that we do have a home to live in. If you're in that situation, you are fortunate. So celebrate it. What's your favorite thing? Take a picture, photograph of it, send it in. Draw a picture of it. Draw a model of it, whatever. Be creative. Let's share what we love best about our homes and say thank you to God. I've got somewhere to call my own. And so, in this very strange time, I'd like us also to look at what other people are doing apart from ourselves. Many people I know have, are, are having to stay at home 
and, uh, and many people who normally work are not able to. But some people do work. We're going to hear first from Anne-Marie, who is still working, but she's doing so from home. And she's going to share with us what that is like for her now. Then I'll be interviewing Sabrina to find out what she is doing. She is working, she's working very hard, but not at home. She is going out, doing a very essential job working for others. So we're going to find out more about what this period of time is like for others in our fellowship. Here's Anne-Marie. Morning everybody, how's life in lockdown? For me it's an extra hour in bed on a weekday morning, which I'm not complaining about and anybody who knows me knows that I quite like my sleep. But seriously, what's changed for me? Well, I'm working from home now, which has its advantages and its disadvantages. I guess one of the big disadvantages is not having colleagues on hand to be able to ask questions and to just support you throughout the day because things happen and you think, oh, I could do a chat and that through before I make any action. On the other hand, it means that I'm not so accessible for other people, which means I don't have a queue of people at five past nine asking me questions and how to do this and can I have an appointment for that. And we can always video conference. We've got the facilities to have a team meeting in the morning and to be able to chat to one another throughout the day when we've got questions. When we get to a point where email just doesn't work anymore and you actually need a conversation. Talking of emails, I probably get an extra 50 a day. It's like exaggeration, but not far off, just because I'm not so accessible and people can't come and ask me the question directly. I didn't realize how popular I was until I was working from home. But most importantly, what it's given me is time, extra time to spend at home with Andy. I get my lunch breaks and the couple of hours where I'd normally be traveling, I can spend with him, which has been really nice. Don't tell him I said that. And I do miss church, not building, but the people. I miss you guys. I miss your love. I miss your prayers. I miss your chats. I miss your hugs. And I'm really looking forward to the day when we can all get back together again. Hopefully that'll be soon. Love you all. Take care and God bless. Hello, Sabrina. Thank you for um, sharing with us today. Can you first just tell us a little bit about what you do? You're working, I know at the moment, as a carer. What does that mean? So I'm a carer at the moment, which means as a key worker, I'm still needed to take care of those who are among the most vulnerable. Um, I don't work in a care home. Um, I travel with another carer and pairs from house to house. My duties, they vary from administering medication to completing chores, uh, personal care or cooking meals. Um, we do have clients who, as a result of strokes, for instance, they can't move by themselves. So we use equipment such as hoists to help them move around um, from bed to their wheelchairs and into the living room or back into bed, whatever they fancy. Um, but I'd say most of all that I provide the assistance that they need to live as independently as possible in their own homes. And how many hours a week do you work? My hours tend to change weekly. Um, I usually cover shifts so I'm not really used to having a set rota. Because of staff shortages at the moment though, um, I'm working anywhere from 40 to 60 hours a week, which is quite a big jump from the usual six hours that I do. Many different sorts of people. Which are the most challenging for you? I really enjoy working with all the clients I have at the moment. Um, I guess it is difficult physically for those who can't move because of all the lifting that I have to do. Um, but then also mentally, we do have um, people who have dementia, for example, and being the voice of reason and staying calm and providing reassurance is so, so important, but it can take its toll sometimes. In pairs, I understand it. 
How are the other carers coping with the present situation? I'm lucky that I work with some really friendly people and we get along quite well. Um, I'd say we're all trying our best to provide good quality care to those who need it despite the current situations. Um, there's not much we can do apart from be patient and take responsible precautions. There's no point trying to stress each other out so we're all just kind of in agreement that we're just going to focus on the things that we can control and take each day one step at a time. Everyone wants to know about the virus at the moment. Are you dealing with any COVID positive people? Is there a lot of talk out there about it? I'm not dealing with any COVID positive people at the moment, um, nor do I know anyone who is. Um, of course, there is a lot of talk out there, but again, all we can really do is continue with our work and try to minimize as many risks as possible there's so much information to take in every day, all the headlines and all of the news and no one has any idea on when or how it's going to end. Um, I think as long as everyone remains sensible and follows the government guidelines, we'll be able to ride safely through these difficult times, God willing. I would first of all like to ask the prayer of thanks. I personally think I am quite lucky to be in this position, so to be able to provide care to those who really need it and especially in this time. Um, I ask for the mental and physical strength needed, um, not just for myself but also for my co-workers, other carers and of course all the other key workers who we are depending on right now. Um, I pray for peace to those who are stressed and to also keep key workers safe from the virus so that we are able to continue our work. Um, personally as well I would like to ask um, in my studies, I think it's quite difficult to plan the next steps of my education right now so I ask that I'm able to find the right path and also to have the time to dedicate to learning so a good balance between school work and actual work is what I'd really like to find. Thank you so much for talking with us today, Sabrina. And may God bless you and protect you in all that you do. In fact, let's pray for both Anne-Marie and Sabrina in their work. Lord, we pray for your protection on both Anne-Marie and Sabrina. We pray that when the days seem long and the tasks seem endless, that you will give them your strength, that when they are tempted to be dragged down to others and to share their worries, that instead you will give them your joy. And we pray, Lord, that your peace will fill their days and that that peace will spread to others also. In your name, Lord Jesus. Amen. Well, Sue's going to lead us in our more general prayers now, and then we'll move on to our next reading uh, from the book, The Letter to the Philippians. Before then, no. And after Sue has um, led us in prayer, we've got that beautiful song, The Lord's My Shepherd. I will trust in him always. That will lead us into our final reading and our thoughts about it. Let us pray. Father God, we come before you in praise and adoration. We bless your holy name and fall down before you and worship you. You are worthy. We tell you that we love you and ask for your Holy Spirit to fill us to overflowing today. Move in our hearts and lives, change us, mould us and use us. Lord Jesus Christ, we share in your suffering and extol you because you gave up everything for us to die for our sins. Blessed Jesus. We ask you, Father God, to help us in our weakness, 
especially during this time of coronavirus pandemic. We pray for all those who are grieving, for loved ones who have died, and for those who are in hospital seriously ill. Bring your comfort and healing balm, Lord Jesus. Strengthen the doctors and nurses and carers and all the key workers across our land and around the world. Bring relief, calm and peace to a world in crisis. In you we trust. Give us joy as we serve you in our homes and our families at work and bring us always to your side. Be our shield and our protector. Amen. A blessing till we meet again. May the road rise up to meet you. May the wind be always at your back. May the sun shine warm upon your face and the rain fall softly on your fields. Until we meet again, may God hold you in the hollow of his hand.
The reading is Philippians 1, verses 20 to 24. As it is my eager expectation and hope that I will not be at all ashamed, but that with full courage now, as always, Christ will be honoured in my body, whether by life or by death. For me to live it is for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. If I am to live in the flesh, that means faithful labour for me, yet which I shall choose I cannot tell. I am hard pressed between the two. My desire is to depart and to be with Christ, for that is far better. But to remain in the flesh is more necessary on your account. Amen. So our theme for today and the next couple of weeks is waiting. Waiting to go home today. It's one of those great themes in the scriptures, actually. And uh, it keeps coming up again and again. In a sense, the, the whole idea of salvation is about going home. Look at the prodigal son, for instance. And at the end, it is the son who comes home. And that is the happy ending. When God uh, freed his people from slavery in Egypt, he took them home. We read earlier that passage from Jeremiah. That was placed in a, a situation also where the people were waiting to come home. They had been taken into exile in Babylon. And they longed to come back to their own home. So Jeremiah had written to them. And you remember that first instruction is basically settle in, get comfortable, look out for your own prosperity and the prosperity of those around you, look out for those around you. But he didn't stop there. He gave them that promise that they would come home again. He was even able to tell them that they would return within 70 years. One of the people who went out in exile amongst the, the first tranche of people to be taken away was that man Daniel. We have his book written for us in the, in the Old Testament in the Bible. Now we're told that when Daniel realised that the 70 years that Jeremiah had spoken about had, were up, he turned to God in prayer. By then, Daniel was an old man, well into his 80s. He could not expect to do the journey back to Israel. But he knew that this was the time when God was calling his people home. And so he prayed into that situation. You can find his, his prayer in the book of Daniel. And it's actually a prayer of repentance. On behalf of the whole nation, he prays that God will forgive his people. That in so many ways they are there in exile because they have turned away from God. And now he's calling on the people to repent and calling on God to forgive and call his people home. That is in fact what happened, that um, God used the emperor of Persia as he was then because the Persian Empire had overtaken the Babylon Empire. Um, the Emperor Cyrus made an edict, almost sort of out of the blue, no one was expecting it. He just decided that the Israelites ought to go home and rebuild their temple. That would be 
a good thing to do. So he gave them permission to go home. He even gave them the, the resources that they need in order to rebuild the temple in Jerusalem. And that was the start of their journey home. It was a miracle. People hadn't expected it, but perhaps they should have been if they'd been paying attention to what Jeremiah had told them. Going home is so important because home is where we belong. So as Christians, where is our home? When Paul write, wrote to the church at Philippi, he said to them, you are citizens of heaven. Where you live now is of secondary importance to the eternal truth that your home is heaven, that you belong with God. Jesus, when he's speaking to his disciples, the night before he was killed. John chapter 14, he said, I am going to prepare a place for you and I will bring you there to be with me. And you know the way to that place, he said to them. You remember his disciples, especially Thomas, he spoke up and he, he said, no, we don't know the way. We don't even know where you're going. So how can we know how to get there? And Jesus said, I am the way, the truth and the life. It is only through what Jesus has done for us, it's only through us putting our trust in him that we find our way home. In many ways we are lost until we get there. And so we have that reading from Philippians, where Paul is talking to his friends there in Philippi. And he says, I'm torn. I don't know whether to stay in this world or to depart and go and live to be with Jesus. He says, I'd rather be with Christ. But I know that I have to stay here a little longer because I have a job to do. You're amongst the people that I need to serve until I go home. You can read that almost as a suicide note. Is Paul giving up on life when he says he'd rather be with Christ than here in this world? Is it all just got too much for him now, all the persecution, all the trials? No, that's not it at all. It's that Paul has understood the reality of who he is and where he belongs. And it would do us all good for us all to understand that same reality. You see, when Jesus says that he has gone to prepare a place for us, he means it. There really is somewhere for us to go when we have finished here on this world. This is just a, a short space of time. Eternity is forever. Imagine, if you will, a long piece of rope, so long that you can hardly see the end of it. Imagine taking that piece of rope and walking down the road with it, spreading it out long, long as you can make it, round the corner, along the next road and along the road after that. And then you come back and you look at the end and you take that six inches in your hand and you say I am going to live my life according to that six inches of life. Actually 
our life goes on and on and on into eternity. And our focus should be on the majority of our life, not on that little passing bit that we spend in this world. Not that we should be uncaring about this world. Remember Jeremiah's advice? You're not at home, but settle in. Work for the best for yourself and for those around you. Yes, and that's the advice for here and now. But he says also, don't forget, you're going home. There's an old um, Southern American song, a sort of spiritual, that talks about heaven. It refers to heaven as Beulah Land, which simply means the beautiful country. It goes like this, Beulah Land, I'm longing for you, and someday on thee I'll stand. There my home shall be eternal, Beulah Land, sweet Beulah Land. And then the next, the first verse says this, I'm kind of homesick for a country to which I've never been before. No sad goodbyes will there be spoken, for time won't matter anymore. I like that verse. This idea of sort of being homesick. In other words, just knowing deep within you that there is a place where you should be and we, we're not there yet. In Ecclesiastes, it says God has planted eternity into a man's heart. We all have that sense of knowing what eternity is. We, we, just deep within us, somehow we know that there is more than this. This is not all there is. What's it like? Revelation opens the curtain a little bit to let us see. Chapter 21. You could do worse than read it afterwards. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride, beautifully dressed for her husband. And I heard the loud voice from the throne saying, Now the dwelling of God is with men and he will live with them. They will be his people and God himself will be with them and be their God. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death, or mourning, or crying, or pain, for the old order of things have passed away. It's really worth going home. It really is. We often have a worry about how we'll get there. Well, that may be a valid worry, but never if you have your trust in Jesus, never have a worry about where you're going when this life is over. At the moment, it's as if we're all in the waiting room, waiting to go home. There's a story about Sunday school class. And the teacher was trying to encourage the children to understand how good heaven is. She said, all right, class, all those who want to go to heaven, raise your hands. And all the boys and girls raise their hands, except for one. Hello, Mark, he said, uh, why don't you want to go to heaven? Oh, said Mark, I can't miss. My mum says I'm not allowed to go anywhere without her permission and she hasn't told me I can go to heaven yet. Well, 
you don't need anyone's permission except Jesus's to go to heaven. Earlier this last week, Enid went to heaven. Our beautiful organist of many years suddenly died. And although we're sad because we won't see her again until we get to heaven too, I'm not distraught. I know that she's at home. She is with her Saviour. She's with her Father. She's where there is no more pain, no more tears. She's in that beautiful city of God where everything is lovely. Today, to finish our time together, we have a song to listen to. Now, some of you will rem remember about three years ago, the singer John Alexander Wilson came to our church. He led um, an evening of music and then joined in our worship the following morning. Um, he's got some beautiful songs and this is one of his best, I think. It's called The City of God. And he was inspired by that passage in Revelation just to describe the beautiful city of God. I don't know exactly what heaven will look like, but I know I can't wait to get there. Oh, I'm not giving up on this life yet. God's got still got work for me to do. But when he says, it's time to come home, Liz. Then I'll say, yes, I'm ready. Because it's beautiful there. Oh, so beautiful. And this short space of time does not define me. I belong with my Father God. And so do you, if Jesus is your way there. Let's just finish with a prayer and then I'll leave you with that song. Father, you are so generous. You have laid out for us an eternal home where we will always be with you. We can't wait to get there. Lord, sometimes, just because it's natural, we feel fear when death is mentioned. Take that fear away, Lord. Show us the glory of what is waiting for us when this short space of time is over. Burn away the fear with the realization of your love that will cover us and surround us eternally. Amen. God bless you this week. Whatever you do, wherever you go, remember, you're just passing through. You belong to him.
And in my dreams I've seen its majesty It's beautiful, oh so beautiful In the city of our God And a great congregation from each tribe and nation Saints of all ages will join